Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are talking about Inkscape. Now if you've never heard of Inkscape, it's an open source cross-platform vector-based graphics application. If you think of vectors, they're like mathematical equations. Instead of using pixels, you're drawing using the power of math. And that's actually cooler than it sounds like. It allows you to make resolution-independent artwork with a very crisp style. And Inkscape is kind of the poster child for open source versions. Here you can see it's available at inkscape.org. And the reason why we were talking about it today is twofold. It's Inkscape 0.92.5 was just released and they're looking for testers for Inkscape 1.0 release candidate. Now obviously 1.0 is a big release. It's been years in development. There's a lot of nice stuff in there and that's what we are going to look at today. So if you're interested, once again, Inkscape is available at inkscape.org. It's available for every major platform, Linux, Mac, and Windows. Uh, head on over here. This is what we're interested in today. Again, 0.9 2.5 was released. It's a smaller release. We're not going to really get into the details of that. And then we've got uh, the 1.0 release candidate. And that's what we we're going to talk about today. So here is where you can go ahead and download it. Don't worry, I have links to all of the appropriate stuff down below. As I mentioned, available for every single major platform. The cool thing is it's also available in multiple formats. So 32 versus 64. And then as an installer, an MSI, or as a 7-zip compressed file in this particular case. It's a small download too. We're talking like I don't know, 80 megabytes on Windows. So that part is definitely very nice. And then when we get to the end here, we're also going to come back here and take a look at the release notes for what is upcoming in the 1.0 release and what you can test out in this new uh, release candidate. Uh, but we're going to get to that after the fact. First thing we're going to do is head on over and take a look. So here we are. This is Inkscape in action. This is a uh, graphic file I use. It's free off the internet. Basically, just work, search for car SVG if you want to test for the same thing. And this is an intensive file. So I use this to basically test performance. And that's always kind of been my biggest issue with Inkscape is the performance and the user interface, to be honest. Now, in this release, we got a nice updates to the user interface. First off, they updated their uh, graphics toolkit. They used GTK for a lot of the icons and the UI stuff. And they've upgraded to GTK 3.0 in this release. So it gives you a bit more of a modern UI, nicer flow and feel with the, uh, the UI controls and everything you're working with here. So that is definitely a nice thing. They've also updated HDPI support or high DPI support. So if you're working on a 4K monitor, it, it's actually usable now, whereas it used to be really hard to use this guy because the, the controls didn't scroll up that well. So we do have much better uh, high DPI support. Now, what about performance? How are we doing there? Well, I can pan around okay, and I can zoom in kinda. So that is a downside. The performance is still not stellar. And this is weird because this is actually, it's a CPU bound process, but even then it doesn't seem to matter. I've run this guy on my Surface Pro 6 and it actually works the best on that machine. Whereas what I'm working on right now is an i7-700 uh, with a uh, GeForce 1080. And, and this is the performance you can expect. Also ran it on my brand new Razer Blade laptop with like the newest of CPUs and the 2070 GPU and all that. And the performance is about the same as what you're seeing here. So actually on my Surface, it runs the best. Now, one of the upsides though to the Surface is it's got a touch sensitive screen and touch sensitive drawing support was really improved in this release. So if you're trying to do natural painterly stuff using the pencil, there is a new feature called Super Pencil that will do uh, better strokes and you can kind of get more of a natural art style with it. So if you're using Inkscape for doing drawing or anything like that, you're probably gonna like the 1.0 release a whole lot more. But obviously the performance, yeah, it ain't there yet. And to give you some compare and contrast, the program that I use is a commercial program. It's called uh, Affinity Designer. Actually, it's on sale right now too. And let's compare the performance. So, yeah, and uh, as I understand it, uh, there is no GPU usage at all in Inkscape at all, and apparently it's using a library called Cairo, which has been all but abandoned. So there's an, there's an underlying support performance issue that they have to look at, and unfortunately, it doesn't seem to have been fixed in 1.0. Though one of the things I found interesting from previous videos I've talked about this, people say that on Linux, the performance isn't this bad. So I'd be interested. Let me know in the comments down below. If you grab this file, this car.svg that I'm using here, again, just search car SVG, you'll find it. Uh, what's the performance like on your platform? And if you have multiple computers, is it running equally bad or 
it's the same on all machines, regardless to what hardware is in them. I'd be really interested in knowing in the comments down below, because so far I can only test this on my three machines, and all of them are Windows-based. So I have heard this does run quite a bit better on Linux, and I have no idea on Mac OS. So um, yeah, the perform and actually the kicker is 1.0's performance is actually still better than 9.2.x. So there is a performance improvement to be had here. Now there's other things in this release to be aware of as well. In fact, there's a ton of things in this release that will kind of kind of glaze over when we get to the release notes. But I'm showcase a couple of things that I find to like like the most. So again, there is new options for the pencil. I, I don't have a um, I'm not on a tablet or anything right now to showcase this to you, so I don't have my uh, Wacom tablet hooked up and I'm not using my Surface for this video, so I can't really showcase that to you, but that's a big deal. So if you're doing natural stroke kind of stuff, there's now pressure sensitive support, so you get nicer brush stroke results out of that because of that. On top of that, we now have these new zoom options, and I really like these. This is something that all um, applications like this should have. The first one is x-ray mode, and this one is basically, you can look at the surface underneath where you're looking. So instead of being fully rendered, you can actually see, um, you know, what the makeup is. Now, probably a little bit more useful is actually split view mode. And this actually splits your screen on this guy right here. And you can see um, the, the end result. So you've got the rendered and the unrendered. So this does make it, so if I wanted to come in, I want to select this shadow that you've got going on right here. I can easily come into this mode right here and grab it accordingly. It makes the selections a whole lot simpler, and this is definitely a nice uh, integration here. Now, I'm a little curious why there is up and down. Um, I don't know what purpose up and down would have. I guess maybe to get the widget out of your way, but that is definitely a nice feature to have here as well. Again, there's also a lot of improvements, uh, just kind of underlying technology. So again, they upgraded their widgets, um, so the the um, th that kind of stuff should be nicer to work with for sure. Um, they've also got better uh, PNG export and so on. And on that topic, let's head on over to the release notes. So again, I'm just going to go through the release highlights. So there's a bunch of stuff going on here, but we're not we're not going to go into the full level of detail on this stuff. But we've got things like you can now invert the y-axis if you so wish. There's pitch to zoom, which again, if you're using Inkscape on a Surface, 1.0 works so much better than earlier versions. And I do highly recommend it on the Surface. And amazingly, as I mentioned earlier on, the performance is very solid. So here we're going to go through the release highlights. I already covered some of this stuff. Uh, so we got theming support and more customization options. Now, interestingly enough, though, I think with the theming support, you have to um, still copy a whole bunch of files over. It's not a matter of, you know, going into settings and say dark theme. Now, if I'm wrong on this, let me know. But before when I saw it, it still basically involves changing files at the file system level, which is a bit unfortunate. All right, so we got uh, better high resolution support, which is definitely nice to see and definitely needed that. Uh, native support for Mac OS with a signed and notarized DMG file. Now, this is actually pretty important because... I don't know, Apple's ongoing war on indie developers. They're making it harder and harder to run things on their platform. And this is one of those security things. And I get why they're doing it, but basically you have to have a signed and notarized uh, application file to get past some of the security checks. This makes it so it's much easier to install this on Mac OS computers. Um, coordinate origin to the top left corner by default. Um, so you're gonna have basically uh, zero going Oh, sorry, negatives going down this way. Um, we have canvas rotation and mirroring on canvas alignment of objects, split view and x-ray modes kind of showcase both of those. Uh, we've got power pencil for drawing editable variable width strokes for the pressure sensitive graphics tablet. Once again, that is a very nice feature that I can't demonstrate to you because I don't have such a thing hooked up. We got new PNG export options, integrated center line tracing for vectorizing line drawings. Uh, that's actually kind of nice if you're, if you're, um, tracing over things. Searchable symbols dialogue, new uh, live path effects selection dialogue. And on that top, there's a whole bunch of new live path effects, including new corner system for fillet, uh, filleting and chamfering, um, lossless Boolean operations, offset and measure segments, uh, path operations, deselection of a large number of paths, as well as groups. Ungrouping are much faster now. And that is actually true. So if you're grabbing a whole bunch of things, so for example, Let's head on back over here. Let's go into our layers, show our layers, and we will just show, say, the wheel. I think we, yeah, wheel. All right, so we're going to right click and we're going to say hide other layers or hide other layers. All right, so here we go. Now we've got, oh, let me just turn that off. Uh, we got uh, split view turned off. Zoom on down here. So say we want to grab that wheel. Now you will see performance is much nicer. This is an area where it used to chug in the past. So if you want to make edits and changes, that does make your life uh, quite a bit easier and nicer. That is definitely an improvement. And the performance is actually a lot better than it used to be. So that is definitely a nice new change. I don't know where my wheel ended up there, but 
doesn't really matter. All right, so that is another improvement they've got going on there. Um, do, do, do. All right, so much improved text line height settings, variable font support, uh, browser compatible flow text, uh, extensions programming interface updated with many new options. This is a breaking change, however. Uh, so a lot of third party extensions will need to be updated to work with Inkscape 1.0. And then you can now use Python 3 for creating extensions. So Python 3 is pretty much the de facto version now, finally, it only took 10 years to get uh, Python 2.x out of the way. And if you want, there is a ton more information on everything we just went through. So you can see more details of how things broke down. They did a really good set of release notes, to be honest. So again, we got the origin was set up to the top left corner like that. Now, I believe you can, yeah, you can change that in uh, preferences if you so wish. Um, yeah, bunch of changes across the board. The one thing I'm looking forward to, again, I like this. I, I they did demonstrate that earlier on, but uh, having the uh, the split view is definitely a nice improvement. Uh, X-ray, we kind of showed quickly. Uh, the changes though, the one I'm looking for is the pencil changes. Oh, we got a new eraser. This is actually kind of sweet. So you can actually erase from uh, objects pretty like, like you would use a normal eraser and it's changing the underlying geometry in a non-destructive um, non way. So just draw that line through and then it's basically going to turn that into separate shapes. So that's that's a nice little change we've got going on there. And again, the pencil. So the change here to the pressure sensitivity can now be enabled for the pencil tool. And this is going to make doing things like, you know, anime stuff style drawings or whatever, so much nicer to work with, especially again, if you are using a tablet of some form, and this also works on my Surface. So I do like that feature. And we got a bunch more of details of everything we went through, uh, new SVG output, some new special effects being added, and so on. It kind of, to be honest, it just kind of keeps going and going and going and going. Uh, but so there is a ton in this particular release. Again, the one shame I still see the performance, just it needs to, it needs to improve. So I just zoomed, we're waiting for the zoom. Just again, compare and contrast. It does need that kind of a performance update. That That is one of the areas where I really love to see Inkscape ex improve. But I gotta say for the most part, this is a nice incremental development. 1.0 is going to be a no brainer to upgrade to. The UI is definitely an improvement. It's nice that you can finally use this on high DPI monitors reliably. The performance is not perfect yet, but it is definitely improving. I like the new split view. Uh, yeah, so generally it's a nice release. And what the key is right now, they are looking for uh, testers to, to check it out. So you don't need to have any development experience. You just need to try it, run into bugs, report the bugs to them, let them make this as good of a product as possible. So that's what they're looking for right now. They're looking for testers for the release candidate. So if you're interested, do you want to head on over to Inkscape? Once again, I will have links to all the relevant stuff. Go and download this version, the RC1, and you can really help them out by some reporting some bugs. They've also got some information uh, basically on how to go about reporting the bugs just uh, here in the help make us make it better. There's some details on what they know, but the, what they're especially interested in is problems with text in files from older versions, uh, crashes, freezes, information loss, extensions that don't work and things that worked in the last version but no longer work in this version. So if you're willing to help them out with that, that's great. Also, they are looking for some translations. Uh, so if you want to help them with their translations, they are looking for people for that as well. So you don't need to be a coder to really help them out at this point in time. And a lot of times with open source projects, people want to contribute, but it's hard to do so when you've got no programming ability. Well, you got a perfect opportunity. You can contribute to a very useful open source project uh, by helping them with these things. Or else you need to just check it out, see if Inkscape is right for you. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. Also, again, I'm really curious if you run this guy on your own machine, uh, how the performance is. If you're running this on Linux, again, I've consistently heard that Linux performs a lot better. If you're running it on a Linux machine, let me know how the performance goes. If you run it on a Mac, let me know how your performance was. And if you're running it on Windows, if you've got multiple Windows machines, let me know if the performance pretty much stays the same regardless to the power of those machines. And that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.